Whether it's bad planning, bad luck, bad timing, or bad inventions, well-intentioned bad decisions have plagued history for thousands of years. Welcome to Historic Hindsight. Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're going to talk to you about Krampus. That's right, Johnny. It's a yeah. holiday special. I, I wanted to do something for the uh, the festivist Christmas, Hanukkah, something or another season. Yeah, your, your, ha your happy holidays catch-all phrase. We'll just yeah. lump everything in December and January together. And, uh, yeah, and Plus, I'm going to be 100% honest. It is towards the end of the year. It has been an awful, awful month at work, and I wanted to be lazy, so I copped out. Well, I at also, least the rest of 2020 hasn't been stressful at all. So, Right. I also want to apologize to everybody at home for the background noise because it rained uh, where I live and traffic is exceedingly loud. Ah, well, so you know. You're going to hear those noises more than you normally do. But it's Krampus. Just more, it's just a more organic feel for all of our viewers. You know, it feels like you're <laughs> sitting right in our garages with us talking right, about, yeah. about Krampus. So, okay. Um, I actually don't know much about Krampus. Oh, he's more than just a, you. No, it doesn't surprise me. I didn't know a lot about. It. Well, it, it shouldn't surprise anybody at home from for American listeners because who the hell is Krampus, right? Yeah. Other than a D-rate, awful, horrible horror movie that came out a couple of years ago, which he's more than just Wait. that. I'm yes, sorry. They, uh, Hollywood at some point got so desperate that they made a horror movie where based Krampus around... was like, yeah, based like, on Krampus. Okay, so is is Krampus not like just a uh, European um, Saint Nick, or like what? Well, he, 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 okay. So he is a uh, he is a horned anthropomorphic figure. So you know that that human like but not a human thing. Uh, he is he is described as a horned demon that's half goat, half man, and often mistaken for the devil. Oh, okay, uh, I was going to say because that sounds like the devil's description, like the cloven yeah, hoofed and all. Yeah, that. he's 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 very, very much similar. mistaken as the devil. Okay, so not uh, Saint Nick. He he is he is, he is usually <laughs> well, we'll get there we'll get, we'll get there he is usually covered in sheepskin chains and cowbells although the chains are a post Christian symbol that are trying to bind the devil because you know Christians have to ruin everything fun okay so before the Christian I assume this is some pagan guy or whatever uh, yeah. and then uh, they decided he was running around free and we can't have that so they put chains on him because yes. that now now it's okay to have your uh, uh, your devil cosplay <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as you put chains on it you're good it becomes, it becomes a kink <laughs> it's fine and we don't kink shame here no there's no kink shaming on historic hindsight That's right. that is the one thing that both me and johnny <laughs> will oh, we hey, can agree on that you do you buddy unless it's related with children but that's a well right that's, that's not a kink, kink. that's not a kink. that's yeah. something aside now, from that. uh he is what's considered one of four christian or christmas entities or beings or like good guy bad guy thing spirit stuff okay um he comes from the alpine region so think of modern day germany mm -hmm. but it obviously goes way back before modern german history right but he it does is, make sense that this type of creature would be uh kind of seated in german german yeah. mythology and or that area of what yeah. became german. he uh he is the counterpart to the good spirits so so traditionally okay. there are three good spirits you have saint nick you have santa claus and you have what's called the dead morose which is roughly like grandfather frost He's right, a like Santa. Father Winter type thing. Yeah, Father Winter. He's another Santa Claus look-alike kind sure. of guy. Right, because uh, yeah, Saint Nick and Santa Claus are different, which is odd too. Yes, yeah, they're we also kinda, we use that interchangeably. Or at least I did growing up. It was yeah, jolly old Saint well, Nicholas, Saint Nick, and then you know, that well, was Santa Claus. Well, there's Saint Nick, the saint. Um, you know, the Catholic the saint, the real one. Yeah, okay. the real one who was a real person. Um, and we'll get a little bit to his his legend just very. You know, very. Yeah, this bit. isn't about him. Uh, but then, of course, you know we've got the Santa Claus and all that stuff. Which, of course, Coca Cola is responsible for a jolly red guy, happy or American idea of what Santa Claus looks like. That's Sh shocking that a marketing department <laughs> would be in in charge of determining what uh, tradition is going to be for hundreds of years or a hundred years or whatever. 
And these, uh, these good guys, uh, they would traditionally leave modest gifts uh, to well-behaved children on December 5th or on the night of December 5th. Mm. And those gifts would include oranges, dried fruits, walnuts, and chocolates. So no PS5s for these kids in the pre-commercial age. I mean, you're getting nuts and fruit. Like, what kind of awful existence was going on where their kids are like, yeah, nuts and fruit. Thank there you is a- for food. <laughs> there is a uh, there is a well it goes back to you that um the 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 one of the episodes that we did about uh china mount Mao, Mao Zedong, and how like there was this whole group of his followers that like worship the mango because it was so yeah. sweet and they had nothing else to live for <laughs> but a mango so yeah i guess in that context sure okay. so uh, hey everybody watch just be thankful for what you have today uh, Bad kids, yeah, right. Bad kids would uh, would get a birch rod, so a, a, a birch stick, uh, uh, a, and a I'm switch, assuming a switch. Yeah, for, so I'm assuming and daddy. Yeah, hit them with. <laughs> yeah you, your mind went right where my mind went. Uh, and the really bad kids, Johnny, they got a visit from Krampus. Oh God, what is, a, a, a visit from an anthropomorphic, cloven hooved, probably horned Satan like being. Thing? Yes, and the uh, legend has it that Krampus would go uh, door to door with Saint Nicholas on December fifth. The bad kids uh, 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 tested him. Would 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 you know if if you were a bad kid and you tested him or you didn't believe in him or you weren't scared of him, uh-huh. he would beat you with that birch rod, shove you in a sack, kidnap your ass, and either take you back to his lair where he would eat you, or other legends have it where he would take you to the underworld. So way to go, Germans, for taking fear to the next level. I mean, so, okay, uh, obviously this is myth and legend and what they told their kids to behave. How many times, though, do you think somebody was hired to come to the door of somebody with some shitty little kid (laughs) and kidnap their child well johnny we'll get there because uh (laughs) okay all right i'm jumping the gun again yeah it's fine so i should probably start sending you these notes again so you can read them and get an idea of what i'm doing but eh, it'd be great if i would read them but you never did so it's fine (laughs) so the origins of krampus and well like all things in the world it's pretty much pagan and we don't really know we know like you, there's things that are like him in pagan rituals. A lot of it goes back to, you know, uh, well, what we call Christmas, which is winter solstice and mm-hmm. summer solstice, those changing of the seasons. There's a lot of fertility rituals that come with, uh, right. with, with paganism. And of course, right, which is where these. Easter came from. Christmas yes. was the winter solstice. Easter's was the spring, spring um, equinox, e- equinox yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah. And so, and that's where he kind of comes. He's this entity that's been there from the get go with the whole, fertility rights all that fun stuff okay that's about as best we can get but big caveat there is well we he just kind of shows up one day um he is he is from what is now germany but he also spreads east to the slavic nations funny enough he doesn't spread west to like you know franco or england or no the states now why not uh catholicism oh yeah they, they, they ruin. They had. They ruin everything. So they hadn't yet figured out a way to turn this into something that they can then capitalize on to yeah. make converts. Over over the history of the existence of Krampus, Christians try to like kill him off <laughs> over and over <laughs> and over again, which they do successfully, I guess. In like, because he's not celebrated in England, he's not celebrated yeah. in Franco, and he's not celebrated in obviously the states, or not really, at least. It, I mean, he's, he's celebrated kind of ironically. Now yes, yeah, in the United yeah. States, I would say. <laughs> right. Um, his Christmas connections come with Saint Nicholas, and um, now the I reason why there's that Saint Nick's kind of a dick too, uh, walking well, around we, with this guy. Well, we're gonna get so so. Why Saint Nick? Because we always we get taught, at least when I was taught in the, the wee little Catholic school, that uh, you know he was this benevolently great person who gave gifts out to the homeless and all that fun stuff. He was yeah. you know, he's a saint. Nice old um, man walking around giving giving presents to children. Now, in the Dutch culture, uh, Saint Nicholas actually died and came back to life, very oh. much like Jesus Christ. Uh, but when he came back to life, he wound up going to a bishop. Uh, that was kind of the cause of his death and beat him with a birch rod. Oh, so, hey, hey, there hey, we go. There's our connection. Yeah. That's why oh, he gives sorry. bad kids. That's sorry, why he gives man. the bad kids birch rods. And that's why 
uh, Krampus beats people with birch rods because what happens is we can't have a saint running around beating people. Well, so I mean, we no. create so. the bad entity that does it for him. It wasn't Saint Nick that beat the bishop with the birch rod. It was Krampus. That's right. He he had died, obviously gone to hell, been possessed by Krampus. Wait, he can't have gone to hell though. No, he's a saint, right? Right. So, okay. So something something happened in that weird purgatory area. He got possessed <laughs> by a uh, a sheep demon, and then came back, and then beat beat the guy with the stick. Yeah. So an early early Christian religion, and a little bit pre Christian, but going into early Christian, around December fifth, there was an event known as Krampenschnaut or Krampus Night. Uh, the duo would go door to door. St. Nicholas would ask the kids if they had been good and then have them recite a Bible verse or poem by heart while oh. Krampus is in the background dancing around like a jackass, like mm, 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 <laughs> just being a little distraction. Just here, and if, just in case you can't do it. Just, just in, in case, case you can't, can't do it. it. Oh. And, and, uh, and if the kids uh, lied and said they were good when they weren't, or if they failed to recite the Bible verse or poem to the satisfaction of St. Nick, Krampus would beat them, throw them in his sack, kidnap them, and eat them. Now, so. I imagine this is some fun little lighthearted, like when I was in German class, I think we talked about Krampus a little bit in high school, and uh, we'd get like black licorice sticks to represent yeah. the it was probably something fun like that and not actually uh beating children at that time right because they they really cared about the well-being of of children back then sure mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not no is that am i am i do i no. have my facts wrong here I no like... <laughs> i mean like i just i think i think okay so the next day on december 6th those who survived kramp and schnout so if you if you if you were good I survived or if, if you survived krampus beating the <laughs> shit out of you you got gifts and hey. that's the modest that's the modest gifts that we were talking about of you know Fru nuts and fruit nuts and fruit and Man, if how you're did, bad how you did, got a birch rod how did christmas or I, I, is this a christmas celebration still Yes, this is okay. this is, so how this is like early like get to what we have now. Well, how did kids enjoy it back then? Because well, it's like you have to memorize a Bible verse at fear of getting beat if you don't, and then you get nuts and fruit? The hell out of here. Like, <laughs> give me a nerf gun or something. What are you doing? I don't, I don't at least know. a hoop and a stick for crying out know. loud. I don't know how to tell you this, Johnny, but the olden days kind of sucked did they they were like like nuts and berries is kind of like the highlight there's a there's a meme which is the ridiculous it's we like... come from hunter gatherers like we've been we've had nuts and fruit since the beginning of humanity but there's, and that, before. there's that have you ever seen that meme like life in the 20 like the 2020s versus life in the you know 1020s and all this stuff and it goes all the way back to like ye old times and medieval ages and it's like i twice had berries it was a good life <laughs> that's 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 so you know count your time. blessings everybody count your blessings you're not doing too bad you're not working at the age of six yeah and married off at the age of 12 with your well, fifth if, kid if you're, by 14 if, if you're a girl mm -hmm. right Obviously, as a white man, things weren't much different than they are today. You still had all the power and could do whatever you want. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the Catholic Church would attempt to ban Krampus tradition, but, you know, they, they failed uh, in the German region and, of course, East. Yeah. Where, uh, yeah, they, they like where, their kind of hardcore uh, Well, harsh... Catholicism never really caught hold in, like, the Slavic nations and Russia and stuff. It, it, it became that weird Eastern Orthodox crazy very mean like if you think catholic church is mean yeah well i mean and that kind of lends into why the eastern european nations continued to celebrate krampus because he kind of went along with their whole corporal punishment or harsh punishment or whatever builds strong character and strong men and women and can help you know lead the country or what you know whatever they're thinking there but yeah so that that that, that tracks but to get to uh, to get to your question about uh, Christmas and, and and how do we like it? It was awful then. How do we get to kind of where we are now? Yeah, things become a little bit more commercial for uh, for Krampus in Saint Nick around the turn of the 1900s when Austria's postcard industry uh, it used to be controlled by the government. When the government let them be an independent entity and like become commercial yeah. uh they they took krampus to heart and i'm gonna have some pictures uh for the for the youtube peoples um 
and they would they would start making postcards about Krampus, and it would be like a picture of this demonic demon with kids in his sack that are crying, and it's like greetings from Krampus. <laughs> Yeah, hello. <laughs> you've got you've got to be good for Krampus. It's like all these postcards. One of these involved children in a sack. <laughs> and then, of course, you know we can't just like like we want to sell it to more than just the parents that have kids. So we got to no, sell it course. to the adults too, right? So then they introduce female Krampus, who's oh, uh, no. oh, who's no. just a she's just a human with some horns, and she's they, just she she's, just they just sexualized her, a, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, she's a, she's a sex symbol, oh. and she's all like. She's got the men in her sack, like, be good, or otherwise Krampus is going to get you. Oh, I, oh darn. That, that sounds like some mixed signals that, uh, that this female dominatrix Krampus is sending to these grown-ass <laughs> men. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Don't think change. Right? I mean, I, yeah, you know, maybe if that's your thing. I don't, I think, I think that's the problem is I think some people, would, that's not their thing, and that, that would, they wouldn't want the, the, the devil, female devil, like, beating them. And there's other people that are like, yeah. That's, I can't. Yeah. I can't understand like, where those people are coming from. Did you ever see the awful movie Bedazzled with the Brendan Fraser? Oh, yeah, uh, yes, I did in theaters. No, yes, no okay, less. Great. I was. I was actually uh, dating a girl who uh, was in love with Brendan Fraser, uh, which it was uh, weird. Uh, first off, who's not? I well, mean, it's weird because uh, okay, you were it was in love weird. With him too, it was right? weird because he looked like forty-eight, and we were in like middle school or something. But <laughs> like, I don't. I mean, I'm still. I she don't... had some daddy issues. What are you gonna do? <laughs> One day we're gonna have a podcast of just mm-hmm. Donnie's old relationships. No, and we're the, not. <laughs> and and the, the fun that they had. We are not doing uh, that. But anyways, uh, so, so so the bedazzled. Yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't get the Brendan Fraser. Like why? Like sh- the devil is like, you can stay with me. I love you. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, what's uh, what's the problem, Brendan? Uh, the problem is that devil doesn't stay looking like that. Devil takes many forms, Tommy. And as a uh, God-fearing Christian, you should know that. Oh, oh, damn. If I have to deal with a non-hot devil like <laughs> once in a while to have that smoking hot devil. like No, oh, see, I, you, you'd only oh, get damn. it until you sold your soul. I, mean, I feel like you're missing the point of the bedazzled movie. Mm. I don't remember it very well. Mm. But in any case, so that's Mrs. Claus to uh, the Krampus. That's the Mrs. Claus. We got a Krampus. different Mrs. Claus here in America. Yeah. She is not a sex symbol. Uh, she looks like your grandmother. You sent me a postcard of the sex symbol. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which I'll put up here too because <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, you know. We don't kink shame. There's no kink shame here. <laughs> but we can't, have, we can't have sexy Krampus stealing all the husbands. So Christians tried to ruin Krampus again in 1932. Oh, come on. When the Krampus just tradition, because of one little sex symbol that is making all their yeah. husbands go haywire, yeah. When the uh, when the Krampus tradition was banned in Austria outright by the Fatherland Front, which is as awful as it sounds, it is a radical bunch of Christians. Yeah, that took over <laughs> the Austrian government. Which you think they would have learned their lesson because it wasn't like, oh, 1932, shit. Hmm. Never mind. They had more important things to deal with, Tommy. They had well, a sexualized. No, no it makes Krampus. sense. I was thinking, like, I, I, I put it ahead of where I was, but 1932, Johnny. That's 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 the Nazis. So yeah, the Fatherland group makes total sense now. Never das mind. Vaterland. Das Vaterland. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it! Nazis ruin everything. Today, it's still, which is ridiculous. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, we, we shouldn't be dealing with this anymore. But, you know, after, after the world had its awful World War II uh, fiascos and things kind of calmed down a little bit and the Nazis went away or, well, well came to America. Yeah, moved um, away. <laughs> moved away. <laughs> moved to Argentina the United, and the United, United States. States and Argentina, <laughs> yeah. They, well, they were brought to the United States if you were a scientist and they were moved to Argentina if, you know, you, you were one of those guys in the death camps. You were running <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> If you were Hitler, <laughs> which conspiracy theories believe he's there? Anyways, still by the nineteen. 19- well, I, I, I nice well, I'm sure there, there are probably some that do, but no. Well, Elvis uh, is still alive too, so he's. They're probably chilling together. Right, yeah, they're probably chilling together, Along despite the their pot, massive. Piggy. Yeah, despite their massive drug-induced histories that would have killed them long time, anyways. But yeah. whatever. And also the whole bullet to the head thing with Hitler, but you know. We'll ignore that because it's Christmas. And the cyanide capsule. Uh, by, by the, there's your, da- there's your, uh, there's your hit, yeah, there. daily dose of Hitler. 
Uh, but by the 1950s, though, don't worry, because uh, in order to preserve their pagan histories and their, and their forefathers, the Germans and Austrians bring Krampus back! He's coming back! Oh, man, why so, was the 50s better everywhere than, the, than it was in the, the US? United States? Uh, so, yeah, they, the they, 20s, they, too, <laughs> man, God. Uh, and by the late 20th century, a new tradition emerges called Krampenschlauf, or Krampus runs, where people would dress up like Krampus, get shit-faced drunk, there you go. and there have, parades, right. have, have parades down the streets, go door-to-door -door begging for booze and scaring children, <laughs> where they would literally dress as Krampus and go, you have some drunk asshole, hey, hey, hey. I need a beer. So, give me a beer and sing Dad. a poem or I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Where's your kid? Bring him out here. Hey, what's your favorite Bible verse? I don't know if that's a Bible verse. Give me a stick. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> right, and I'm funny kind of, enough, I'm kind of in, in with Krampus now. Like, and funny right. enough, uh, prior to like, um, prior to like the 1960s, 1970s ish, that's actually how Christmas was traditionally celebrated. Like before the 1900s was like a cross between Mardi Gras and New Year's Eve. It was just a drunken celebration sure. where people would go door to door like, hey, Prost, and it's Christmas, and, well, and being, dress up like Krampus. And having its roots in pagan history, that makes sense that it would just be like the – the summer equ the uh, what spring and fall equinoxes and the summer, summer and winter solstices. solstices those are big days big for the parties pagans. yeah and all they did for their big holidays and everything was they they threw a party and that turned into Christmas and Easter and Halloween and the Fourth of July which should be the second of July <laughs> that's another video <laughs> oh, we've done that video a couple <laughs> times already it still just irks me. Stupid Fourth of <laughs> July. Adams was right. We're just we got right, hey, 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 sorry. Right, stay guys. On topic, Tommy. Let's go. Right. This is Krampus. This is a, the holiday special. Holiday special, which we're doing with such a great job. It's our first Christmas first special. Ever. Yeah, and, and, and our and, one year anniversary is around the corner. It is. So. It is next week is our one year anniversary, and we're going to be doing a. Was, we're going to be doing we'll tell another, you about it at the end of this episode. Yeah, Watch well, to the end. Tommy, tell me more about Krampus. And Krampus? Krampus, well, Wait, so like I said, Christmas and Halloween were actually kind of, uh, yeah, they were kind of intertwined. And in fact, our trick-or-treating tradition comes from th this Krampus tradition going door-to-door. -door, these Krampus runs, knocking on doors, asking for booze. That actually is where a lot of this comes from. And it comes over from the, from the Pennsylvania Dutch. Ah, good old Pennsylvania Dutch. In the, and we'll get there uh, because, you know, and you might be wondering about yourself, uh, Krampus sounds badass. Why didn't we have a Krampus growing up? Um, on, I'm guessing it's on account of the terrifying of the children. I mean, but, I'm this, but maybe uh, you're going to go a different way with it. But we have this, it doesn't well, seem like that would really uh, ride with America's uh, snowflakey well, values. We have the stupid elf on the shelf. That's oh, God. the tradition now, or I guess it's been a tradition for a long time, but my family must have been lame because we never did it when I was growing up. Oh, see, I didn't, I, I thought somebody invented it in like 2008 or something like that. They like, might have, maybe they did. I don't know. Because um, we didn't do it as kids and I, I'm not doing it for either my kids because it's a whole lot of work and good God, it's nonsense. Like talking about giving kids some issues, you're, you're telling them that they have a, a spying device in their house. You're going to grow, raise a bunch of kids with tinfoil hats thinking the government's watching them all the time because they have some little doll that moves um, around on its own. But I mean, they kind of are. Well, I mean, I, I, this actually might be just a, a some type of revolution to I think <laughs> I think to train I think, the next generation to be anti and and maybe they're maybe I think, these are survival skills that my well, kids aren't gonna have. Now. I was I was gonna go the opposite way, saying that it's more like a a coping mechanism. Like you're used to people spying oh, on you. Oh, just so get when, there, make it so okay. when you make when you think allowable. when you think, oh man, I could use a new uh, antenna for my car, and all of a sudden without typing anything in or speaking out oh. loud, your Google app is full of new antennas for your car. I kid you not. My wife sent me a screenshot. She was shopping for mattresses. She sent me a screenshot to my phone of the mattress or whatever and, and the deal and all that. And I logged on to Facebook five minutes later, had three advertisements for different uh, mattresses. And so what I don't understand with some of this though is um, – so I bought my wife a Christmas present. It's a custom thing. I won't go into too many details here because she might watch on the off chance. 
And um, I just keep getting advertisements from this company over and over and over again. To buy I the bought same your thing. product. Yeah. I just bought your product. I, yeah, that's, that's some algorithm mission accomplished. being all messed up. You're yeah. not, you're not. Anyways, so uh, what it really boils down to is that the, 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 the Puritans, I mean, most, a lot of our early immigrants come from, uh, come from England, the English Isles. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's very much a, a, you know, a huge chunk of them were the Puritans who weren't um, into that, like, uh, well, they thought the devil was real and that sure. witches were real. So we burned women who thought for themselves because clearly they were witches. Uh, right. And so the, the Krampus tradition never spread to that culture and obviously never spread across our seas. And now, and that's because of the, the tangible real fear of an actual devil. Yes. Instead um, of it being a story to, for the kids. Yes. Um, now, the, the German community that does come over, it, there is a, a tradition that does come that's very similar to Krampus. Uh, and so in our Pennsylvania Dutch community, or modern-day Amish, um, uh, there's something called Belsnickel, which is very much like Krampus being. He's kind of a Krampus snake, Saint Nick combined into one entity. No, everybody knows, like he's, uh, he's Dwight does it on The Office. Everybody knows all about Belsnickel. Okay, I don't because I yeah. never. I didn't Have watch, you been Nazi or dice? And he has he he has a little bolt and he walks around. And he has sticks that he beats people with. Yeah, the bird naughty. sticks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's why he does it in the office. When okay, great. I, I've up. not I've not watched enough of the office to have. I've seen only that. seen it like eight or nine times, so it's no big deal. Or twenty or thirty. Come on, Johnny. It's all you ever watch. You're That's like true. my wife watches Grey's Anatomy over and over and over Creature again. Comfort. You watch, yeah, yep. Office over and over and over again. Yep. To each their own. Uh, recently, there was that the awful movie that I talked about called Krampus. Uh, and there's also a comic book that's commercialized Krampus in the United States. So go look that one up. I guess if there's comic book stores that have survived the 2020 apocalypse. I, like a Krampus, how many storylines are you going to have for that? Is it like a limited release thing? Or is it like, I, no, how many I issues? Know. I don't know. I just saw somewhere that there was a comic book and I didn't. I didn't. I'll bet, he's a, I bet he's some sort of weird superhero or something. I'm not reading it. Oh, Sorry. Hey, go ahead, uh, comic book fans. If there's any crossover, let us know how you like it. Look it up. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy you. I have not read a comic book since, like, episode 80 of The Walking Dead. Uh, see, like, I never got it. I never did get ago. into comic books. I, I was never, was I was never big into it. it. Oh, wait, that's a lie. That's a lie. I did read, uh, it was, like, last year, I did read... Um, the Punisher kills the X-Men in Marvel universe where it's a comic book of the Punisher. Literally like it's an alternate universe where Marvel superheroes kill the Punisher's uh, uh, family. And so he goes off and he kills every one of the superheroes. It's I'd watch actually, that movie. It's a, I want them to make a movie. Be good. <laughs> I'd watch, watch the shit out of that. I don't, I don't do, <laughs> I don't do many movies, but I'd watch that. I'd watch the shit out of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, of course we've got our American bastardization of it. There are a few uh, Krampus Schlaf parades that are around some of the larger cities in the U.S., but it's more like Mardi Gras than anything Bunch else. Bunch of hipsters. And it's more like in like kind of New Orleans and hipster areas. Bunch of dudes that decorate the, their beards. Yeah, it's not, nearly to the, it's not nearly to the extent that uh, you did. De- hey. No, I didn't. You, I did you didn't? Oh, I thought no. I saw some shiny in there. No, that, yeah, no. that's the grays, Tommy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because we're getting old. It's so depressing. No, I actually only did a decorate because I, did, I didn't have the – tiny ornaments or, or or i would have obviously I'm, I'm a festive festive guy got my santa and the cats so that's about that's about what i found for krampus um a little shorter episode for us but i think it gives us a little well, bit of time in the back half to to say thank you to all of our listeners for this year it's been a it's been a, a run that started out as me and johnny just wanting something to do and yeah. this was prior to covid we didn't even know about covid yet when we started this and yeah yeah this was uh well i mean it, it was a long time coming this is basically what we did when we got together is this is a, a type of thing we talk about this is a little more in depth i do uh, research where like, i did not do right, research yeah, before yeah you yeah you just told me lies i'm working way up, oh, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true <laughs> we would get drunk and go to the hookah bar with with Mab at the Egyptian Cafe, and we would talk about random BS. So this is that, and uh, thank you for anybody listening, anybody enjoying it. Uh, if you made it this far, subscribe. Yeah, you do that, do that for us. Hey, it doesn't do anything bad for you, and it helps us a lot, and it uh, makes it, it fills our hearts with warmth. 
And even if you hate us, hit that, smash that dislike button because apparently whether you hit the like button or the dislike button, it doesn't Doesn't matter. It it makes YouTube think that we're important enough and start like sharing our shit. Drop some negative comments. Tell us how often. I, it's great. I, just just yeah. take the time to really criticize and dig in. I will probably delete it because <laughs> screw your free speech. <laughs> uh, we are doing next week kind of a throwback to our very first episode. We're going to be doing more of these too as the uh, Civil War in hindsight kind of progresses. Um, obviously, we're going to have to do some more Civil War battles. So we are going to do uh, we are going to do Chancellorsville next week. So uh, so all those massive amounts of people who've watched uh, our uh, uh, Battle of the Crater, hey, you have Chancellorsville, another Confederate victory. Hey, uh, which Confederates is awful. are looking like they might win this war. It's looking I good promise, for them so far. Yeah, I promise you, I absolutely don't like dirty dirty rebels but apparently the only episodes i've done so far are how stupid was the union during the civil war (laughs) pretty stupid yeah uh yeah it's kind of like it's like watching um the patriots play miami right like they beat miami so many times and and they they're so much better than miami but every once in a while like miami it just they have some stupid trick play at the end and they beat them it is because of some something, some little stupid mind thing. So yeah, that's that's where we're at with the Confederates in the Civil War with the episodes we've done right now. Uh, yeah, although historically on the Eastern Front they did a lot better than. <laughs> Anyways, so join us next week for uh, for uh, 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 the Battle of Chancellorsville, where we talk about the shenanigans of uh, of Joseph Hooker and uh, and the Robert E. Lee's and the uh, Stonewall Jackson. Who spoiler alert doesn't come out quite so well at the end of that battle. Can't wait to hear about it.